Hey guys, how's it going? It's Philip with Trade Genius, and on this episode, I wanted to cover Omisi Go OMG. It's an ERC20 Ethereum token. Um, so, real briefly, just kind of go over the background of Omisi Go and the project in case you're not familiar with it, and then we'll go look at the chart and then we'll wrap up with a quick look at Bitcoin. So, um, Omisi Go basically is a pretty popular payment platform. Uh, in Southeast Asia, unlike most ICOs, these guys already had a, a application running. And what they're aiming to do with the ICO tokens is that those tokens will be the currency for that payment platform. All right. So um, basically, you know, they're looking at the remittance market, which is a very huge market. I like the Asia exposure. Um, they're looking at things like basically being a cross platform between currency, which is fiat cryptocurrency other things like loyalty and reward programs and things like that so kind of a centralized uh, application for payments um, so they're gonna be big on settlement settlement times transparency um, and improving upon the existing remittance system so basically they'd be looking to take on you know visas and MasterCard it's it's ambitious yes but they could start filling a niche and then gain some traction so I do like it they are, like I said, already running and they're they're actively uh, doing transactions. In fact, some of the Asian McDonald's are taking uh, transactions with the Omis Omisigo payment system. So they're doing something, unlike a lot of uh, ICO projects. Um, the other thing, too, is eventually they're going to go from the Ethereum blockchain to their own blockchain, the, the <coughs> Omisigo blockchain. So when you hold these tokens, it's going to help with the proof of stake. So the more tokens you have, um, the more that you'll be rewarded as the transaction volume increases on their blockchain. All right. So that's basically it in a nutshell for OMG. I think there's a lot of upside to OMG. And uh, so basically what I wanted to do is jump over to a chart. So let's go ahead and do that. And we will look at let's start at the daily. So if you guys notice here um, on the daily chart, so there's a couple of fib ranges that it needs to work through. Um, this is kind of a descending wedge, um, which would be bullish. But basically what I see here is a lot of volume accumulating in this area, and I think it's putting in a base. Um, the other thing I like to see here, or what I'm seeing here, is we got a. This is known as a bullish divergence when we're starting to see the indicator not make new lows, but we do see new lows here versus here. Okay, so that's a that's a bullish sign too. Now on the daily, um, our stock RSI uh, definitely did cross into a buy area, so you, you saw a little bit of move up, but. Um, until it breaks through this trend line you're you know we're going to see which way this resolves i do believe this does resolve up but I'll, we'll break it down into a little finer timeline on the four hour if you notice um we do have a long signal a lot of times what will happen is when we get these four hour long signals kind of in a chop like that uh, we'll just start we'll all of a sudden get a move maybe the next day or so busting out of that also they are being listed on the uh, Hobi Exchange, or Hubi Exchange, however you want to pronounce that, um, I believe today. And usually when we get a new listing like that, um, the price tends to pop. So that is something to keep an eye on. Um, if you look also, get a little more granular on the hourly chart, um, you're going to see that this channel here, I mean, essentially you could buy and sell in this range pretty reliably um we do we are going into a, a spot where we would get a buy signal like here and in here and back over here it took a little time to resolve but that was kind of at the beginning of where we started forming a base and then getting into this channel up and down but i do like the price action here this line here is some pretty serious resistance and so i think if we break above this i think this existing price channel gets blown out and I think it runs. So, um, you know, I think you could probably get a quick 10 to 15% gain on this move. And if you could pick it up here in this 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0084 level right in here, then I think uh, pretty good chance we could see a repeat bump and up 
and it might fight through here a little bit and then boom off to the races so that's my read on it i think it has a good uh, i think the risk reward here is pretty good and uh, i think over time omisigo has a lot of upside um you got to keep in mind though you are uh looking at this in bitcoin terms and uh i think right now with alts you kind of have to just grab your gains when you can and be pretty nimble a lot of guys like to think about these alts in uh fiat terms or money dollar terms but in reality you could be up 10 percent in dollar terms and think you're doing good but you could be down 30 percent in bitcoin terms and what that means is you're better off being in bitcoin during that time so I don't really like to look at the dollar terms as far as these alts go because ultimately you want to be measuring against the measuring stick and right now that's the that's bitcoin bitcoin's the king so if you're outperforming bitcoin you're doing as good as you can in the crypto space and if you're not then you know that's just lost profits so that's my thought on that um real quick let's look at bitcoin and uh you know, we're heading into about the, we're in the, definitely in the London session. We're heading toward that 5 a.m. hour Eastern where it seems to really take off. Um, if we look at the daily, basically we're still in this long signal. A um, lot of volatility right in here during that kind of blow off top to 11.464, which just basically gave us an instant 20% pullback and then resolved in a couple of daily dojis and then off we go so um if you look at you know basically i have these numbers here which represents kind of like where i see bottoming volume and i like to see a thrust basically a, a thrust down and a thrust up sometimes that happens in three bars or most of the time two bars uh in the case of this one these two bars basically consolidated after this thrust down so you know add those up and that's one of the biggest volumes that we've seen as far as after a move and a consolidation this just happened so fast and that's another thing we're seeing too is that these moves correcting are shrinking over in time and what i mean is if you like take a look um this pullback here right was about that long this pullback shorter like that um this one is even shorter here and this one doesn't even span a day it comes literally down vertically and it's over so um, the pullbacks are getting exponentially shorter in duration i think that's all part of a larger spike move up i think ultimately um i think definitely we see 14 relatively soon 14,000. Um, we do have a bunch of clusters of fib targets based on all this price action here um, we could see some um, basically hit 13 consolidate and then move back up to 14. and in my previous video i've even made the case for seen a, a big jump up to 18,000 and I think we would see some sort of pretty quick pullback from that level uh, would be my read so anyway Bitcoin looks like uh, doing the next leg up after some consolidation here and if we look um, consolidation is a little more visible on the hourly chart and then we'll wrap it up but if you noticed uh, kind of the mode right now for Bitcoin is up consolidate up so, uh, you know, I think we're going to see more of that. Um, this was another area of consolidation. You can notice by this, this, and this trend line actually has been being uh, keeping price in check. Um, does if price moves away from this, that's going to be very bullish. But again, I think we might be going into a, a lake here where we could see some pretty wild price action to the upside. People are worried about the Bitcoin futures. Um, I see some talk like, oh, they're going to short the market. Really looking at that as more of a hedging instrument for the institu institutional funds. So I'm not really bearish on that at all. But uh, anyway, looks like we're going to attempt to tackle all-time highs, and I do expect that to break out higher. And uh, we could see um, see a move. I would say we could easily see a move up to 13 and then do some more consolidation like we see in this area here. All right. So that's read on Bitcoin and on OMG. So hope it helps. If it does, please hit the subscribe and like button. And I will see you in tomorrow's video. Take care, guys, and thanks for watching. All right. Bye.